Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Welcome to another uh, TeamSense Customer Spotlight webinar. I'm Rob Bellina, Head of Sales at TeamSense. And our guest for the Customer Spotlight today is Cassandra Kamens from Clayens, a large manufacturer of high-performance polymers, composites, and precision metal parts. Cassandra has spent the last 12 years in human resources, uh, growing from her start as an HR representative at the Atlanta plant of Parkway Products to her current role as CHRO at Clayens. She brings a unique perspective to our customer spotlight webinar this week, both as a senior executive and someone who has utilized TeamSense across two organizations through an acquisition. So Cassandra, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Uh, so just to get started, tell us a little bit about Clayens. Tell us about the company, what they do, and your role. So Clayens is still new to me as well. <laughs> it's been it's been um, about six months, but it's been a great experience. Um, you kind of stole my thunder a little bit, telling me telling about. Me. <laughs> so I have to kind of change my my script a little bit in my head. But yes, I've I've been with the company um, originally about twelve years, starting at one of the locations and have kind of risen through the ranks, and. Um, through this last acquisition in um, June. So Parkway was originally a, a family company 77 years ago. Um, and it, it eventually, as it expanded, was, was uh, bought by a private equity company. So to, to, of course, also expand. So I have been through a couple of those transitions. Um, in the 12 years that I was here, the unique one in in June was that we were now the ones, as opposed to us acquiring other locations and other plants. So not only was I on the side of um, us being acquired by a new private equity company, but we also, in my time here, have acquired four plants um, around the U.S. Um, and so we kind of brought them into the fold, and 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 you know a lot of the implementations and 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 our policies and procedures and things like that that we've done. But then being on the other side in June, where we were then acquired by a larger um, international company based out of France um, with locations everywhere that they wanted to to establish a U.S. and Mexico, really North America uh, base. So they bought three locations in Mexico, um, plus we had a location in Mexico. So as part of the Parkway acquisition, um, they bought our nine plants in the U.S., um, as well as three other standalone plants and just, it's, it's been a wild six months. <laughs> um, they've been very busy and in, in, in turn, we've been very busy. So fortunately about in May, it'll be two years that we had teen sense. And so we had it very firmly implemented in, in, um, our, uh, I'll say legacy former Parkway locations. And then was able to kind of implement it again um, in the new ones, which is something that we're going through now. So um, it's been a unique experience, but it's been a great one and very different from the first time we brought it on, right? Than 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 how we're rolling it out to the new locations. Um, but it's been good. It's been great. Awesome. That sounds like quite a lot. Now, help me out. Um, how how large was Parkway before the acquisition? So we had, um, uh, between here and Mexico, we had about 700, 750. Um, we, in the U.S., um, acquired another uh, about 350. And then in Mexico, between the three other plants that they located, I mean, it's about 1,500. So that's just the North American presence that they added um, they were already in France and Germany and uh, Morocco and Turkey and North Africa. I mean, they're in a lot of places, <laughs> but not but not North America. This was their North American, you know, uh, their ability to make or have a North American presence. Mm -hmm. And so you were small by any means before, and like you you mentioned, had experience on the acquiring side and all the process that goes along with that now being on the other side. Um, before we we start talking specifically about team sense, um, for you, uh, mergers and acquisitions are something that happens quite a bit yeah. in, in any space, particularly in the manufacturing space. Uh, getting the experience of being on both sides of it, do you have um, tips, words of advice for folks that might be listening? 
do your due diligence. <laughs> um, and being in HR, I, I, we live and die by our lists, you know, of course, and, 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 and our, and our, um, making sure that every policy and procedure, it's so important to make sure that you understand, um, a lot of those aspects. Of course, um, my focus has always been on the, the, the people aspect and, and, um, but the legal as well in terms of, you know, um, whether it's workman's comp or whether, uh, what kind of benefit plans they had in place, what kind of policies and procedures they had in place. It's been very unique. Um, initially, we were the ones acquiring, so we were bringing them to our fold. So we were we were implementing everything that we had in place. Um, uh, Legacy Parkway was kind of built to bring on other locations and bring them in. So we, we, we spent a lot of the 12 years when I started, there was a kind of a one-person HR corporate group um, and the different locations had an HR person, and it's built since then to really have a, um, a a strong, solid corporate group that kind of helps with the others, as opposed to being different standalones with different um, policies and procedures. That has actually helped a lot now because with bringing three other locations in Mexico in, fortunately, because Parkway was built the way that it was and structured the way that it was, even though we're merging some things, um, we still have a very strong foundation. And so it's it's very, very important, I think, when through these mergers and acquisitions that you've got a good foundation, that you understand what what's being brought in, um, because that's really the only way that you're going to be able to kind of seamlessly or as seamless as possible um, merge these things together to the benefit of the employees, because you, you're trying not to take away things from them while still in, in maintaining the integrity of the, the the policies that you have in place. So all all while maintaining operations through all the while maintaining operations, making sure that, you know, it's a scary time for employees. We know what's going on, but employees don't understand what's going on. And and anytime that happens, it's very scary for the company or plant or location being acquired. So um fortunately having gone through four of them before us being acquired, it, it kind of gave us the opportunity to kind of, you know, kind of quell any any uneasiness and and not you know understand what's going on and know it's not being broken apart. This is a good thing, but it kind of helped with the communication. I would say that the biggest, most important thing, which kind of communicates to what Team Sense does too, is communication with your people, because there's always only so much that you can share. But if you don't share as much as you can people are going to jump ship. They get nervous. They, 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 um, they like stability. And if it feels like where they're at is unstable, they're going to find someplace else. And so we want to show them that, um, throughout this somewhat instability of merging things together, that it's really just to come out stronger. So. Oh yeah. Great insight. I want to come back to that aspect of communication and engagement with employees. Um, Let's rewind a little bit. You you have the experience of seeing Parkway pre Team Sense and post Team Sense, and now these other locations that are coming into the fold that uh, are are getting Team Sense. Tell me a little bit about what life was like from a call off standpoint, and uh, you know unexpected absences before Team Sense, both from the Parkway pers- Legacy Parkway perspective, and now the Clayens perspective. Yeah. Um. So pre Team Sense, we had a lot of no call, no shows. We had um, a lot more turnover, um, had problems with retention. Um, when we engaged Team Sense, we were coming out of COVID. So things were already, you know, rocky and 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 just a very different landscape than pre-COVID. Um, and so we were looking at, a, you know, all kinds of different ways that we could do it. We found that a lot of times people were, um, if they, you know, we, we have an attendance policy. And so if people didn't necessarily, you need to in manufacturing, qu- quite frankly, like I'm, I'm a very strong, I, I never really had it before, but I'm a very strong proponent of it because it's really the only way that you know that machines are running. Because if machines aren't running, then you're not making parts, then you're not making money, then you don't have a company. <laughs> so, um, you know, th- throughout um, kind of coming out of that, it was, it was, you just had people who either didn't understand they weren't there long enough to to uh, to to get phone numbers to know who to call and i mean let's face it it's a it's a 
the world has definitely changed in the last 10, 15, 20 years um, where people would call out. People don't like making phone calls now. I mean, I don't like making phone calls. <laughs> um, and so, it, you know, the 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 introduction of team sense, um, not only to be able to text out, but to to um, capture more information than people really want to do on, on a phone call. I mean, whether they're intimidated, whether they they they're they're scared to call, they don't want to get into that 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 platform, um, an appless platform of that, um, uh, and very intuitive, right? Because you can text your answer and it it knows to 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 prompt the next one based on whatever it is that they responded. Um, has really changed the landscape. I mean, people are 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 texting it. They have that number. They have that information. They're texting. They're texting out. They're letting us know they're not coming in. They don't feel like you know what? I'm just I'm just not going back. Um, which is what we found was happening because coming out of COVID, there were a lot of places that were we were scrambling to find people. Right. So how did we differentiate ourselves from other companies, for other manufacturing companies? Um, what is it that we could do that could engage the employees more while still um, maintaining the integrity of our policies, right? While still, while still making sure that that um, we had people there, right? <laughs> um, that people were still showing up, that we could we could get them to come in without them just no call, no showing, not returning after the first day. Um, Team Sense has, uh, um, you know, that great. Um, the platform allows you to have like surveys, you know, that you can send out to people as well. So when they're afraid to come in and talk to HR, especially if you haven't had the opportunity to make that relationship with them yet, or they don't, they don't know people there, they don't know to talk to their supervisors. They're not engaged enough to 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 want to come back yet. You haven't hooked them, so to speak. Um, it's programs like this that show them um, one that we're forward thinking that we're 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 um we're looking at the new technologies and the things that that can that that help us keep up and speak to where they are um while still being able to um communicate with the people that we haven't had the chance to form relationships with because those those 30 days are so critical right about whether somebody's going to stay or go absolutely you touched on a couple of really interesting things there you know oftentimes at a service layer, team sense. Well, we're automating the call off process. We're we're automating attendance, and so there's a lot of talk about the process automation and making things easier. And that's all true. But I heard you talk about the aspect of team sense allowing you to have a competitive differentiation in the hiring market. You mentioned um, more engagement and retention, reducing no call no shows, and then and then you made a connection which I like to talk about, but it's it's rare to to get here and say, you know, all of that downstream leads to more parts being produced and out the door and, and growing the business. So my question is long long-winded question, have in any of those aspects, have have you been able to measure any sort of difference between pre-team sense, post-team sense? Have you have you seen those changes, whether it's engagement, retention, productivity? Yes. yes. Um we we do track um you know, our data analytics and a lot of our metrics. Um, and, and, uh, through that we were using it before and, and certainly throughout what the, with the, uh, the implementation of team sense, um, team sense has a great da data analytics, uh, uh, page as well. Um, but something that we were tracking before with, uh, you know, when we were tracking our absenteeism, it was the reason for absenteeism and, and, um, you know, we, we track, uh, turnover, um, particularly uh, closely in the first year, because like you said, that, like I said, that first year is very critical and, and kind of hooking them in. You don't see a lot of people leaving after the five and 10 and 15 years. Um, you see them leaving within the first day, week, month, three months. So we, we, we had been tracking our, 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 uh, those metrics before on how many people we were lo lo losing after a day, a week, two weeks, a month, two months, three months. So, I mean, we've got very granular with the data because I mean, it, it, <laughs> we don't have people, we're not making parts, right? So um, we definitely noticed that when Team Sense came in, giving them that uh, people, that ability to connect with us without, um, I don't want to make it sound like it's faceless, um, but it is, it, it, but in a good way, right? Because again, 
the people if they don't want to come back or if they're sick, they're just going to say, I can't even find the number. I, I don't even want to leave a voicemail. I don't even know who I'm leaving the voicemail for. And our CEO got voicemails because people would just hit numbers trying to find like the supervisor or some name that they could think that they remembered who it was. Right. And um, almost every other day I'd have a voicemail forwarded to me. He's like, I'm not sure which plant this is, but somebody's calling out, you know, um, it took away a, a, a lot of that and gave people, um, the ability to, for whatever reason, you know, uh, that they were going to call out. But rather than just say, forget it, I'm not going back. I, I can't, I don't even know who to call. Um, it, it, it gave them the ability to 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 do that um, and in turn come back, right? So they, they didn't just wipe their hands of us and go, I'll just, whatever other, other place called me <laughs> looking for a job. Um, I'll just take that one instead, forget forget parkway forget plans so um it was it was uh it made a huge difference we did see um and a, a great difference there and and it's good because that's something that we promised our operations team that we would do right so so um i'm gonna jump into something even though you haven't asked me yet <laughs> uh but there one of the things when you and I had talked before was the difference between, you know, what, what was important and, and the difference between implementing it the first time and implementing it post, right, when we're clearing the new locations. Um, the first time, there was a little more trepidation. So so when when Team Sense reached out to me, I happened to answer the phone that day, right? So that, I'll be honest, that's the way it happened. And the the call was very intriguing. And so I said, sure, I'll take the meeting. And I'm so glad that I did. Um, immediately after that one, I brought my team in because I was convinced that I knew that this was going to be something that was great and that was going to really help the workforce. Um, and and my team did as well. From there, it was convincing operations because operations just looks at the money, right? And so they 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 I'm I'm more people focused. Not that they're not, but they're 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 you know they they look to us to bring in the people so they can make the parts. So for operations, you know, it was a matter of, and, and your team was so gracious because we put you guys through so many meetings <laughs> between first our COO and then our VPs um, that we wanted to see. Your, your system spoke for itself. They were immediately, you know, this is great. We love it. And so then I put you guys in front of our plant managers because honestly, if the plant managers liked it, the plants were paying for it, right? So operations uh, ultimately was the one that was paying for it. So they had to be the one that bought into it. And they immediately saw the value in it because they could see that you had a great program. And gosh, this was even before I think some of the attendance part of it was, it was even just the call out portion at that time. Um, And so the hardest, it, although it was easy, the hardest part was was getting it in front of them and trying to convince them of why this was a valuable you know, investment. Um, fortunately, the the system spoke for itself. Um, it, there was not a lot of uh, convincing on our part, and I had pages of information that I was. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm I'm someone who can who can really um, talk my way into something, and and I didn't need to. So this, they they immediately saw the value in it. They were, how quickly can we get this rolled out? I mean, I don't think we could implement it fast enough. So. Um, that was the hardest part, moving it into these next plants because we already had the system. So I didn't have to convince them to buy it. I just had to show them why it was something that was good. Again, the system spoke for itself. Um, once they saw it, they said, how quickly can you get it implemented here? How quickly can we get this, you know, going? Because we want it, we, we want it yesterday. Um, we love this. And so it um it was it was easier the second time around. Um, but it was not that hard the first time. Like I said, your your system really spoke for itself. It's a it's a it's a really pretty system. <laughs> ah, well, Very we appreciate the kind words. Um, <laughs> and for Team Sed's development folks listening in, yes, there you go. Yes, yes. Um, and, and to say on that too, I mean, it was one of the things that I loved about working with Team Sense is that um, it, your group was just as engaged as our group. So they would ask us questions and we'd answer and. You know, I might make an off the cuff comment about something that we had, and I think it was with our attendance policy. And I was like, you know, it'd be great if we could see something like this. And Sarah, who who's you know, we still talk to now um, today um, on a on a, I think it's monthly basis, if not more. 
um, we're not letting go of her. So, <laughs> um, she's like, well, tell me more, you know, and let me, let me, let me give that to my development team. And it was really great to see how, you know, suggestions that were had were then brought into the system. So it's been a tremendously wonderful partnership with Team Sense to see um, how how it's evolved as well. Oh, that's great to hear. You you alluded to the way that HR teams and ops teams sort of see the world differently, mm-hmm. for lack of a better way to, to describe it. And that's not uncommon, right? When we speak to prospective customers, oftentimes we'll we'll start our relationship with the HR side and the folks that are typically looking for help or, or, you know, dealing with the problem. And there's a lot of excitement, but then many times there's, you know, just, just some, some, I, I don't know what to do next. I don't know how to engage the op side. I don't So you did it very successfully. You just described if you were going to do it again, or if you were going to give advice to folks that were um, trying to get their ops folks pulled in and, and help, help them see the benefit. Um, what's, what's your advice? You need to have a partnership with your operations team. I think that um, with a lot of companies that I've worked with before, there can be this disconnect. HR looks like you're the rule makers and, you know, you're just in here to, to, you know, sometimes they love us when they're, when they're trying to, to instill the the policies because they, they have problems, but sometimes they hate us when they don't like those policies and how they're working. Um, But something that's been, that was drilled into me um, when I came to work here uh, uh, was through the person um, that I used to work for is that she reminded me, which we all know, but sometimes we think you really need to be reminded, HR, our, our, our function is to support operations because we don't make money, right? We can bring people in. Um, but operations is the one that 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 makes the parts. Operations is the one that that does that. So we need to constantly remember that we are a partner to them. Um, fortunately, uh, I've worked uh, with this company. They saw the value of partnership with HR. Not not all companies do, right? Not all companies see HR. Um, they see them as more of an administrative side as opposed to a strategic business partner. And I've been very fortunate to work with um, Parkway and now Play-Ins who both see the value in that strategic partnership with HR. And um, it, it it can be difficult to fight for your seat at the table, but it's really important um, that we do and, and, and really where you're going to find it is in operations. So if you can show operations how you support them, that you're not there to micromanage them, but you're there to, to, to help them do what they need to to do without, you know, and, and, and I tell them all the time, like I've formed very good relationships with first the plant managers and then the VPs. And then later the COO, it was very important for me, for them to know who I was, for me to know them that when they have the problem that they can come to me and I'll say, okay, how can we, how can we fix it? I need to make sure that operations is getting what they need while still maintaining the integrity of our policies and procedures and keeping the company out of trouble, right? My job is to support the plants, but it's also to keep the company out of trouble. I have to make sure that I'm maintaining that legal compliance. And so those can sometimes war a little bit with each other. Um, So it's a matter of maintaining that balance. If you can get into that partnership um, and that relationship with your operations team, um, I think that's going to be integral to making anything happen. Um, Because otherwise you're just constantly going to be at war with each other um, because you've got different strategic goals. You've got different visions, right? Um, And I think it's a matter of us remembering that we're there to support them and to remind them that we're there to support them and that we're not the bad guys, um, that we're trying to help them operate. And when we can do that, it makes, it's a, it's a different landscape. I mean, it's a whole different ballgame. So um, I've been very fortunate to have that here and 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 with claims as well. Not not everyone does, and I I have certainly worked for companies that haven't. Um, so I I I'm not going to say that it's easy, but it's it's to be successful. It's what you're going to have to do. Mm. Does um, does Team Sense help you out, out at all with the keeping the company out of trouble aspect, compliance with policies? Yes. <laughs> Certainly, because when you have an attendance policy, 
um, people are always going to try to um, dispute whatever the case may be, right? Now, yes, I called it. That was the biggest one, is that if you had a no-call, no-show, and so they might get a certain amount of points because of it. And, um, you know, nobody likes attendance policies, but really the people who don't like attendance policies are your attendance problems, right? <laughs> The people who are showing up and who are there are not the ones that really care about it all that much. But at the same time, we want to work with people, right? Because we also understand. So I will say that um, for as many that don't like them, for every new manager that comes in, they do say that we have a rather lenient one. Although if you ask an employee, they would say, oh my gosh, it's so strict. Um, but one of the things that you'll find is that they're either going to dispute points, they're going to dispute when they called in, they're going to dispute if they called in. And sometimes if they were leaving a random voicemail on your CEO's voicemail, then, you know, you don't have record of it, but they swear up and down that they did it. And so Team Sense has really taken a lot of that out of it. I mean, if it's there. It records it. It's an impartial, right, system. It's not something that we can say, oops, you know, or, or as we've been, not that we've ever done it, I swear, but as somebody might say, I know that HR person didn't like me and they must have deleted the voicemail, right? And now there's no record of it. Team Sense takes all of that out of it from both an HR perspective and from an employee perspective. It's an impartial system that does, you know, it functions and does what it needs to do. And it's it's either there or it's not, right? So um, it's helped a lot with that um, in terms, and it's, it, it's kind of, you know, it's alleviated any arguments that we have about it. It's certainly been something that we've even used, honestly, when we have... Um, coming from an employer perspective, um, when we are disputing even um, unemployment claims. No, this person did it. And here from teens, we've, we've given data from teen sets and we've had it. Yes, they did this. No, they didn't do this. Here's where they've used it before. They didn't use it here. So they cannot say they didn't know how to, you know. So, I mean, it's it's been it's been successful on that front too. That's good to hear. You, uh, you gave great advice just a minute ago about helping HR folks loop in and 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 speak the language of operations folks. We talk to a lot of, you know, site level HR representatives who are also attempting to get HR executives like you to see the value of team sense maybe more broadly. Hey, look what this couldn't possibly do at our site. I bet that there's things that could do it at all of our sites. Do you have advice there? Uh since you've 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 worn all of those hats across your career. Probably have a good relationship with your HR group as well. Um, I, I mean, the you know, if you want to be, it, it's it's. Listen, I'm 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 not going to say it's easy. I I have been um, very blessed in the company that I've worked for and the people that I've worked for that um, have have listened to what we said and and created that central HR team that has that strong relationship with the plant. So. I would say that if the plants don't have that relationship, they should try to really work to establish that relationship. It's difficult when you don't have that central group, when everybody's kind of standalone. Um, it, the most I can say is is try to get them to a demo because your system is going to speak for itself. That That's what we did um, with operations, right? So um, fortunately, you guys had gotten to me, but when you guys got to me at the time, um, I was I was not the CHRO. There was there was someone else, but fortunately, I had worked with her for a very long time. She trusted my judgment, and so when I said, "I've got this really great system, and this is going to be a game changer," she listened. And so, um, if you don't have that, I would just say make sure that you just present a really strong case for it. Partner with you, Team Sense. I mean, you guys provided us with a lot of great. Um, uh, information between uh, some of the presentations that you had and and the, and and the um, screenshots that you could show because that that's you know, so many of us are visual right you need to see that um, and to to really see what it does and how it's going to work. Um, fortunately, they saw that value in it too. But but I would I would communicate to them to work with you guys to get that information to build a strong presentation about why why it's going to be effective because it, it just is i mean it's a great system <laughs> one last team sense question um can you think of a particular anecdote or story when you were really grateful to be using team sense yes and you know what i even wrote it down so hang on one second <laughs> um
Okay. So uh, it, yeah, I had a lot of points here. So I remember the very first time um, that we pulled the analytics, the very first time that we pulled the reporting when we could see and we could really show without the manual tracking or the guessing the, the, you know, it shows you the reasons why people are, the reasons that they're calling out. You can start to see trends. You can start to see, you know, being so data driven that we are and, and, and that so much of what we do is in understanding that data and how we can, you know, re retain employees and better our engagement programs. We can't really build great engagement programs if we don't know where we're disengaged. So, um, I think that, um, you know, it was, it was, it was such a relief for us to be able to see that data there. Um, it wasn't guesswork. It wasn't something that, um, because people weren't calling us back. Right. So we were guessing why, um, but it was great when employees could go in and see, because that's something that they can do as well. When employees can go in and see, um, the information as well. So, so I think that's, that's, it's not a particular moment, but I do remember the first time when we had it implemented and we, we had an issue at the plant. We said, let's pull up the analytics that we see here and see these call-ins. Um, it, it was just, I mean, it was just a game changer for us in terms of like really being able to understand more, um, the data, right. It was, as opposed to the gu guessing what it could possibly be. Yeah. Awesome. Um, one final question about claims in general, and then we'll, we'll move to Q and a, uh, yeah. if there's questions from the, from the group, um, it's really obvious from your answers that, that you guys are very thoughtful about the hourly workforce and making sure that you're at the forefront of how you're, you're building the organization to support them and serve them. So tell, tell us a little bit more about what you're doing outside of team sense that makes clans a great place to work. So we have, um, gosh, we have like the, the ones that a lot of people have the service awards and the employee of the month or the quarter and, and birthday recognitions and things like that. Um, but you know, we've, we've really, and even excellent attendance. So not perfect attendance, but excellent attendance. So we've got different programs like that, that we've used to really try to help engage employees. Um, but one that uh, I think that we're currently working on um, that uh, I love is is like an employee's perks program. And the idea is built on um, when you go to a particular uh, um, hotel or use a particular airline and you get, you know, kind of points for being a, a valued customer. So the idea is that for employees to, through different actions, whether it's volunteering for rework or whether it's, you know, a good deed they did, or particularly, you know, um, we have eye on safety awards, but now, now kind of establishing points to it as uh, for people to, to, to accumulate. So it's something that we found when it, it was something that kind of came to, I guess, um, our minds and the idea that came during COVID when we were looking at different ways to engage people, but also knowing that during this time, um, you know, money was a lot tighter. Everything was kind of going around, you know, shutting down or, or, or closed. And so what could we do to engage the employees to show that there was value to something that they could still, you know, whether cash in or whatever the case may be, but not cost a lot of money because that's how again we were going to sell it to operations right sell it sell it to to our our CEO and our CEO so we we sat down and we kind of came up with what we call like an employee perks program so through different actions even if they got like a good performance review there are certain points that they could um, accumulate through those and then through these points they could cash it in for an extended lunch or uh, eventually a day off. Or uh, the big thing, which was the most popular, was perhaps removing some of their points from the attendance, right? You have enough, you, you wow. have enough perks, points that you could cash those in to maybe drop a point or two. And so it it really um, engaged employees in terms of, of whether it was volunteering or whether it was um, just, you know, trying to be a, 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 a better employee and be engaged on the floor um, their their participation in certain activities that we had throughout um, safety things like that. Um, it also gave them something to oh I can see my points values increase and just a few more points and I can cash it in for this. So it gave them that as well. Um, we're still in the process of building it, but we hope to be um, 
getting a platform to track it and to, to do it soon. So we're 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 always trying to do, of course, what a lot of people do with the engagement programs, but to come up with something new as well. And we did it through surveying the employees, like what mattered to them. If mm-hmm. it's if you had if we implemented this perks program, what is it that you would want to see as a reward for you to cash these in? If you were the bronze or the silver or the platinum, you know, kind of like some of those hotels that I'm not going to name, but <laughs> that do, um, what would you want to see? Points was the big one, you know, a, a, a day off or an extended uh, lunch break or things like that. And so, you know, we took that feedback and we put it in there and built it and we presented it and how's this looking? And they gave feedback back and they got excited about it because they saw that we were listening to them. Um, now they're just waiting for us to implement it and that's going to take a little more time. The, the acquisition kind of threw off our timeline a little bit. <laughs> what an innovative program. Well, thank you so much. Um, we'll move to Q&A from the group, and I think Justin is going to help facilitate that. So, Justin, if you've got questions, we can... I, I'm on, and Cassandra, great to see you again. Thank you so much. Um, you've, you've sparked a lot of questions, wonderful conversation. That The, uh, the first one that I'll throw out at you um, from the attendees is how long did it take you to roll out to the employees? What was the hardest part? Um, I'm trying to remember back. It did not, I mean, I've implemented a lot of different programs and TeamSense was really not that difficult. I think the most was um, just getting the the reporting, right? So so, so a lot of the information were, were, we have, we use ADP as our HRIS and so it was the, getting the information out of there and 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 getting it to team sense to make sure that um, the people were updated, the information was updated because as long as they were getting the new employees, then somebody could automatically be found in the system. So I think those um, uh, were probably the the getting the the reporting right is probably what took the most. But I don't remember it being a very difficult process to be honest. Um, and, and maybe that's just for me speaking more recently of implementing a lot of new things through this acquisition and cure connections and things like that. And it's been a headache, but team sense, um, I want to say it took, uh, I think the implementation time they say is six to eight weeks. I want to say that we were on the, um, four to six side of it. Um, once we got the reporting in place, uh, it, it went, it went, um, fairly easily, and you guys have come a long way since then too. So I imagine that the process is even more seamless than it was then. But um, we had a great uh, team leader uh, on on the team sense side, um, and so it, it's it's been. I mean, it was it was not as difficult as uh, a lot of other implementations have been. It was actually quite seamless. I thought it was just a matter of getting that reporting right. That was the only. Oh, sorry. Know, I mean, it sounds like most of the work was on the ADB side, understanding the data structure. So you could get it, get the employee information into Team Sense. Is that right? Yes, yes. Just working with them and making sure that um, you know that the the information was matching up and it was getting pulled appropriately and and information was flowing. So yeah. Okay. Uh, there are lots of questions. So thanks for hanging out because there are lots of questions. Um, hopefully we have a couple more minutes. Uh, the uh, you mentioned communication. Uh, and communicating with your employees. Talk to us about some of the things that you've been communicating with your employees about with TeamSense. And for example, I'll just give you an example of something I hear from other customers. They used us to communicate with their employees about their benefits open enrollment towards the end of last year. Is that something you've done or? Yes, yes you- absolutely. So about- we we've used it so so outside of even that we use it for um new hire surveys and sending them out like you know uh, the big thing was that it was one day one day after because really we wanted to know are you coming back because you know around that time of covid you just didn't know you could spend a day in orientation and then on the next day they didn't come back or they didn't even come back from lunch so um we saw a great value in the program when they mentioned that they had these kind of surveys that you could send out so we use them as new hire surveys we use them for um, even separation or termination. So when you have sometimes someone that quits, they don't want to fill out the paper. They don't want to do an exit interview with HR or they're not forthcoming and honest. But again, the same reason that when people will use it for no call, no shows, they'll be really honest in those in those communications when they're not sitting and looking at you face to face and and trying to tell you the things. And, and that's what we want to hear, right? So you're going to, we want to hear 
what what could we do better? What what did we do? If not anything wrong, but you know what what could we improve on? So we use we use that to communicate with with employees um, with the exit interviews as well. So we use it for our new hire um, surveys, our exit interviews. Um, we did use it to remind people about uh, open enrollment. And um, we, we, we do a culture survey here. And so we sent out reminders about that. Hey, make sure that you go out and you know, participate so we can understand the culture of the company. So we, we've engaged a, 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 a company that helps us uh, uh, implement a culture survey and understanding. Because again, if we don't, we might think we know what the problem is, but that doesn't mean that's not what the people are seeing. And so we found through the culture survey that 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 was it, that what the employees were saying were the issues were not the issues that we thought that we had. And so it really kind of bridged that gap. And these surveys that you can do through TeamSense because you can create your own can really help as well. Thank you for that. And you mentioned during the Clayens Parkway acquisition that people were feeling anxious about that. I can understand that feeling. Did you use it to communicate during that time as well? We didn't, but that probably would have been a very good idea. <laughs> um, that that um, that probably would have been something that uh, we could have used that as a communication tool as well. Um, but it was a but we 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 went to the plants and had discussions with people and had town halls and meetings and things like that. But um, I, I certainly see no reason why we couldn't have. That would have been a great idea. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then the last one, and thank you again so much for your time, your generosity this morning. As a CHRO, you have long-term plans and vision about programs and things you want to change and implement across all the multiple sites. How do you, how does TeamSense or does TeamSense open up for you new things that you might think about doing at a strategic level that maybe you couldn't? take on before you had this way to communicate so broadly with folks? Um, that's a good question. Yes, I think that it does only because I think that the the possibilities are, are limitless in the way that you can gather information from people that they may not necessarily want to provide to you if they think that they might be, um, if they have to talk to you. So um, I think that in a lot of ways, um, it's a way to gather a lot of great information from people to really understand. Um, and, and, you know, being a manufacturing company, I would say at least 85% of our people do, don't, don't have, I mean, they certainly don't have work computers. They're not sitting at desks. Um, they're not, they're not, um, they don't have an easy way of, of, you know, when you ask them to do a survey, um, you have to hope that they either can do it in ADP, but they're certainly not going to try to find a website and do those things. So, so Team Sense has been really great in being able to push those things out. They get it, you know, they can answer with a one, two, three, or four, or, or put in any you know comments that they want to. Um, and and they're a lot more candid and open about uh, their responses. And with that, it really helps us understand um, where we need to where where we need to go to achieve these you know strategic. Uh, goals and 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 uh, objectives that we have, right? Because it's great to have those, but if you can't get, I guess the the if you don't understand where your people are, you're not going to be able to take, um, you know, your company and 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 your goals to the next level. Because if there's that disconnect, if you're not listening to what they're saying, um, and you're just trying to plow forward you're not going to be successful. I mean, you're, you're, you're going to lose people. You're going to lose their engagement. You're going to lose their interest in, in, um, in, in who you are as an organization. And so it's important to have that communication and to understand where they are and for them to feel like they have a voice and that they, that they're willing to speak to you. Fantastic. That's all the questions, Rob. I'll hand it back over to you to close up. Okay. Cassandra, thank you so much. This was a great conversation. You shared so many great insights from a lot of different perspectives. Um, we're very grateful for your participation. And thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, uh, join us next month. We have the customer spotlight with the TeamSense webinar on the first Tuesday of every month at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.30 a.m. Pacific Time. And if you'd like to participate and be spotlighted yourself, you can reach out to us at hello at TeamSense.com. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.